Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I welcome you in Jesus' name. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire, hey, Miss Colette, to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands. Good morning, Reverend Brown. We lift our hearts, Sister Cherise, Brother Donnie, as we offer up these praise unto your name. Sister Ethel, Antoine, Janet, welcome. Sister Gertrude, my sister Retha, into this place. Hey, Brother Stan, Brother Ty, welcome into this broken vessel. I see you, Colette. You desire to abide, Brother Horace, in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands. Hey, Brother Page, we lift our hearts. Hey, Sister Lola, Sister E, Preacher Stephanie, Sister Tina. Oh, Lord, help me, y'all. Mm -hmm. Welcome. To this place. Hey, Sister Kim. Welcome. Hey, Sister Deborah. Into this broken vessel. Sister Crystal, I see you. We desire to abide, Brother George, in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands. And we lift our hearts. I see you, Brother Lonnie, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Sister Colette, you remember we used to sing that? Welcome to this place. Hey, Sister Monica. Oh, welcome into this broken Converso, hey Mother Duhart, you desire to abide, Sister Laverne, in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands, hey Sister Kelly, and we lift our hearts. Good to see you, daughter, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Mm. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Hallelujah. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts. Hey, Brother Andre. As we offer up this praise unto your name. Hallelujah. We lift up our hands. And we lift up our hearts. As we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on, pray with me. God, we bless you on this day. God, another opportunity to come together. Amen. No matter where we are, that we might worship you in spirit and truth. Pray, God, that you would be up with us on this day. Have us go up from this service better than the way we came in. We already know it shall be done. So in advance, we give your name, glory, honor, and praise. Holy Spirit, come on in and take control. It's in your hands. We bless you. We offer up this praise unto your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord of my soul. And so, my brothers and sisters, amen, we greet you again 
on this wonderful day, amen, the day that the Lord has made, amen. And so I got to tell you that, um, you know, uh, here we are again on another, amen, another Sunday in our homes, amen, celebrating, amen, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen, thanking God for sending him on behalf of, amen, a sinful world. So that through faith, y'all, we might be saved. Amen. Again, I say on this Sunday that if we were in Piney Branch, we would echo those words of Psalm 118, 24, that declares this is a day that the Lord has made, that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, Sister Carolyn, good to have you in the house. And so, my brothers and sisters, we shall continue to serve the Lord with gladness. Amen and not use this COVID-19 as an excuse to take a break from the Lord on Sunday morning. And so while we are yet absent from the building, we are still communing together, amen, using modern technology, amen, so that we might come and still spread the message, to, amen, while keeping our members safe, to let the world know that the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell within. But as I've said every Sunday, more importantly, in these uncertain times, uh, these days of life and death, that, amen, the blessed assurance that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. I have my prayer list, amen. Uh, it continues to grow. It's done grown past the one little page. And so I don't want to hold up that page anymore because it's more, amen, than that page. But I'd ask you this morning if you would bow your heads in prayer with me, amen. If you would reach out your hand, amen, so that we might spiritually touch and agree this morning. And as we pray this morning for those who are on the prayer list that I have, amen, that folks have sent to me electronically. And as you pray for those, amen, that you no need prayer this morning. I would ask this morning that we could, uh, man, keep our sister, our friend, um, Sister Nicole, amen, uh, in prayer and her family, Sister Tamika, amen, uh, for the passing of their mother and our dear friend, amen, Sister Marissa Garrett, um, very, uh, amen, lovely uh, woman, child of the Most High God, worked with us, amen, tirelessly for many years, as we begin, amen, the fresh anointing youth ministry at Ebenezer. And so we bless God, amen, for her service, for her life, for her testimony, amen, and for the fact, amen, that she knew the Lord. She knew who he was. And so, amen, my word, my encouragement to Tamika, amen, to them, to the family this morning is you have not lost your mother, for truly we know where she is. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, Nicole, Tamika, family, y'all hold your heads up high. Amen. For mom is in, amen, that place where there'll be no more crying, no more dying. Amen. Where the wicked shall cease their troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Bless the Lord of my soul. Come on, let's pray this morning. God, we just bless you on this day. We thank you again, God, that you might, Lord God, uh, look down on us that you might hear our prayers, Father, even though we're not in a building, amen, as so many would have us think, amen, that we've got to be. But God, that you have made it clear that we can come to you wherever we are and however we are, that we might make our petitions known unto you. And so this morning, God, once again, we come and lift up those who are on our prayer list, those, God, who may be sick, those, God, who might be looking for a financial blessing, those, God, who might be looking for, God, changes in relationships, those, God, who might just need, amen, a touch from thee on this morning to know, amen, in these crazy and, amen, turbulent times, that, God, that you're still in control and that we ought to not worry, not have a spirit of fear, but keep that love, peace, and a sound mind, for you truly, God, are in control. God, our prayer is that you might touch every household, that you might touch every family, every member on this day, and remind them, God, that no matter what they see, that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. And we pray an extra special prayer for Sister Nicole, Sister Tamika, for the family this morning of our friend, amen, Sister Marissa Garrett. God, may you, amen, let her soul rest in your bosom, and God, that her, she might receive the reward for a life well done. We bless you on this day. Keep us safe, God. 
even in these crazy times. We know it shall be so. And so in advance, we give your name glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Hey, Sister Brown. Amen. And so, amen. Also, uh, we understand this morning that the Second Corinthians, amen, 9, 7 declares, amen, that each of us should give what we have decided in our heart to give, amen, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves, and if I was in Piney Branch, they would holler out, a cheerful giver. And so, amen, we ask that you would, amen, what you have purposed in your heart to give, Amen. We now have so many opportunities, so many different ways that you can give unto the Lord. You go to our Piney Branch website. Amen. And it tells you all of those ways that you can, amen, be a cheerful giver. And so let us pray this morning. Amen. Over our offering. Good morning, Sister Dolores. Let us pray. God, we pray that you would bless that which we have purposed in our heart to give to you on this day. Pray, God, for those who, amen, gave and God and will give. We pray for those who want to give but have it not. Our prayer is that you would open up the windows of heaven, God, and give them an opportunity so that they too might be able to give at a time like this. And our prayer is, God, that you might gather our stuff from the east and from the west, from the post office box and from the trustees and from the Giblify, amen, site that we use. And that you might put it all together, take our little bit, and do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think with it. And it might be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. And as you can see, the Amen directions are being provided so that you might be able to give your tithes and your offerings. I want to remind you all on First Sunday, remember, we are going to take communion together. So let me remind you of that. Amen. Make preparations. Get your crackers and your juice. Amen. I know some of y'all are going to be drinking your wine. You're going to bring your wine out. Amen. That's all right. But we're going to take time to commune together. Amen. Get your cup. Get your, amen, your unleavened bread. Get your crackers and we shall commune together. Amen. And so I want to prepare you, prepare your heart and your mind for that. You all might wonder, amen, he is really rolling this morning. Well, I want to make sure that we have some opportunity, amen, to, to, to discuss and really um, take time for the word of God today. Is that all right? Um, the word of God, amen, is what we need in this day, in this time. And so we pray, amen, uh, in Jesus' name, that those who are listening this morning might hear what the word of God is saying to them. Amen. I got a song, and the song will make it make a whole lot of sense. Amen. Um, you all know I don't always sing a whole lot um, before, amen. But I want to sing this song this morning. Come on, it's an old hymn. Hey, Sister Carolyn, y'all know this song. Sing it with me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On oh, Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand his 
Oh, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. The ground is sinking sand. Listen, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne on Christ the solid. Rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. On oh, Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Of the ground. Good morning, Mom and Pop. All other ground is sinking sand. Bless the Lord of my soul. Amen. And so it leads us, amen, into our, our scripture this morning. Good morning, daughter Sharita. I see you in the house. God bless you. Good to have you this morning. It leads us into our scripture this morning, Matthew 16. Amen. 13. Amen. Matthew 16 and 13. I know you got your Bible with you. Amen. If you don't go grab it real quickly. Matthew 16 and 13. Amen. Matthew 16, 13. We're going to read down to verse 18. Amen. A very fitting scripture for this day and this time. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm excited about it this morning. The word of the living God. Amen. Matthew 16, 13. Come on. Fast readers, slow down. Slow readers, speed up. And let's read the word of God together. Matthew 16, 13 says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and others Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. God bless you. Reverend Manderson, I see you in the house. Amen. God, help us on this day as we lift up your word one more time. Be with us on this morning, Holy Spirit, as we open up the pages of this word. And you open up the pages, God, the soul of our heart, that this word might find a lodging place so that we might not sin against you. We bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Many, amen, folks will be resuming their, amen, services in respective sanctuaries today. And just in case I don't tell you the scripture, amen, for this morning, you can write it down where Jesus said, amen, where uh, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he answered that question, amen, he answered it to the question that Jesus said, I know what others say. But whom do you say that I am? I'm preaching from the subject this morning. You got to make it personal. You got to make it personal. And it'll come clearer to you. The more we say, stay together this morning, the more clearer it will become. Why you got to make it. You got to make this personal. Because a lot of folks will go back into their sanctuaries this morning because they believe the hype that we got to be in church, in a church building to be able to pray together. And that's all well and good. I'm not here to judge or to knock what others are doing this morning. 
for there are many who believe that the presence of God is locked away in a place of brick, mortar, wood, or steel. But I'm clear, amen, going to stay clear of that issue because as Paul taught Timothy, I have nothing to do with foolish or ignorant controversies because they breed quarrels. You'll have to excuse me, though, because I'm not one of those folks that believe that. For I have been in the presence of God many times. I've, I've shouted in my spirit many times, and I was nowhere near a church. I've been in the aisle, if I'll be at food line, and I suddenly became grateful that I could buy food, that God was supplying my needs right here in the middle of the grocery store. And right there, I prayed a prayer of thanksgiving while, and, and while giving God some time of praise. And church, I was nowhere near a church building. I've been driving down the street in my car and had a problem that I couldn't solve. And I pulled over because I remember that I had read that somewhere through prayer and supplications, I could make my request known unto God. And then after I prayed in my car, I shouted, I, I praised God in advance for the victory that was surely yet to come. And I was nowhere near a church. And in this COVID-19 season where the numbers keep rising of the infected and the dead, every morning I wake up and brand new mercies I see. I pray, amen, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. And then I give him a shout, amen, of glory because I know he's going to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And I am nowhere near a church building. Bottom line is we don't and we won't ever need a building to go pray for the God we serve is omnipresent. Am I right about it? And that means he's everywhere at the same time. He's not confined to a physical place. The Bible says that his ears are always inclined towards the cry of his children. And it doesn't say that just while we in church, amen, the Bible says that man ought to always pray and not faint or lose heart. And it doesn't just say while we're in church, it says that when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. And it doesn't say just just while we're in church, but it says this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we, amen, will have what we have asked of him. And it doesn't say that it happens just while we're in church. Help me, Holy Spirit. And that's not enough to shout about right there. Amen. It ought to be because the God we serve is not making us store up our petitions, not making us hold on to our prayers, not making us wait until Sunday morning until we get in a building to make our requests known unto him. But uh, that if we need a healing, we can pray on Monday. If we need a financial blessing, we can pray on Tuesday. If we need peace of mind, we can pray on Wednesday. If we need food on the table, we can pray on Thursday. If we need a relationship restored, we can pray on Friday. If we need deliverance from temptation, I'm here to tell you we can pray on Saturday and certainly prayers for salvation and forgiveness of sin are welcome 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for wherever a person is. Amen. And whenever a person is for the word declares that the day you hear his voice, amen, he will amen don't harden your heart and he will come see about you. So let me say to those who want to know, when will we go back into the building at 10727 Piney Branch Road? I've, heard, I've read the guidelines and I'm not going to, amen, put me or the leadership in a situation where we got to have a discussion about letting somebody come in the building because you don't want to wear a mask. Or uh, you want to, amen, sit in your favorite spot and you don't care that it's right on top of somebody, amen, uh, uh, who's not in your household. Are uh, you sitting there mad because we don't have a choir singing live? Uh, but even more so, I prayed about it and the Lord gave me peace about the answer. Amen. That with this thought, that when those with current information, amen, who are keeping their house closed to protect themselves, when those folks feel it's safe to open up their doors again, and better yet, when they go to a church building themselves, then God said that I can come back to him in prayer for direction, and he will direct my path. Truth is, even, amen, for if we open up all the churches, 
most folk would stay home anyhow. And even more so, amen, most of the folk who running off at the mouth about somebody, amen, abusing rights wasn't going to church from the jump street. And so I would rather keep our membership safe and still be able to share the word, amen, for the scripture makes it clear that the ministry that is associated with this gospel is not confined to a place, but rather to a person. And his name is Jesus, the name that's given by God, who also exalted, highly exalted him. Amen. The name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Things in heaven, amen, from the top house to our house. Things in earth, amen, and under the earth, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so this morning, no matter where you are, know that Christianity is not about anybody but you and Jesus. And so it's vital to all of us that we not just, amen, go into a church building, but that we seek the Lord wherever we are while he may be found, that we reach out past man's religion, that we reach out past traditions, past judgment, past, amen, man-made criteria to grow and develop a personal relationship between us and the Lord. And to many folks, it might sound easy. After all, we church, amen, church folk talking to church folk. But I would submit to you this morning that there are many folk who go to the church house, who praise and worship a God every Sunday, 50-something Sundays a year that they don't even know. Talk about a Jesus that somebody else told them about. A Jesus that they never get to truly know and love for themselves. Amen. A Jesus, amen. Some folks who have claimed the title Christian for many years, head ministries, teach, preach, but don't really know how to clearly, plainly, and boldly answer the question, who do you say Jesus is? Because they don't understand. It's not about what everybody else says. Amen. It's not about what you know up here. It's about what you know down here. And that you got to make it personal. Come on, go to the word. The Bible says Jesus went to the coast of Caesarea. Amen. Philippi asked his disciples, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say you John the Baptist. Some say Elias. Others, Jeremiah, so one of the prophets. Amen. And so, so you got to use your spiritual eye. Come with me, Jesus and his disciples, about 120 miles outside, amen, Jerusalem on the northern part of Palestine. And, amen. He wanted to stop and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his team. Amen. Ask him the question, when you're out there among the people and when you're in the marketplace and in the synagogue, what are they saying about me? Who do these men say that I, the son of man, am? And many would ask, why would he ask them that question? And you got to understand that that region was identified with a lot of different religions. Amen. It was the center of Baal worship and the Greek god Pan had shrines in the region. And Herod the Great had built a temple there to honor Augustus Caesar. And so it was important for Jesus to hear what folks were saying. But not only did he ask that question but, uh, because of that, but he was at a critical point in his ministry. He had been preaching, amen, for months now. He should have been well known to the nation of Israel. His fame had spread far and wide. Amen. The common people had embraced him. They had seen his miracles, heard his teachings. Amen. And the word had spread from village to village. But Jesus asked because he was wondering about the religious leaders. They had heard about Jesus Christ and they didn't like what they heard. They were determined that he was a threat to their own vested interests. And so, uh, amen, now there had been confrontation. He had been accused of doing miracles by the power of Beelzebub and they were out to get him. Jesus knew his fate was sealed. His future was certain. There was a cross, amen, out there for him. And so he asked the question, amen, for even though he was going to die for the people, and even though the people, amen, amen, were not worshiping him, amen, like they should have, he wanted to know, amen, did they just see him as a great teacher, as a great miracle worker, amen, who did they say the son of man was? His disciples said, some say you're John the Baptist. They've been looking, listening to your preaching and John the Baptist and you kind of got the same message to repent for the kingdom of heaven is in hand. 
And I want to tell you, John the Baptist was a great preacher, y'all, but he was not a preacher like Jesus Christ. Amen. When John preached, he pointed people to see the Lamb of God. But Jesus himself, amen, made it clear he was the Lamb of God. Some said he came in the, amen, he was Elijah's because he was a man of prayer. And when Elijah prayed, God listened so much so that when God, when Elijah said, God send rain, God would. When Elijah said, God, when he prayed and asked God to stop the rain, God did. Amen. When he asked God to send fire down from heaven, God did that too. Amen. Elijah could pray, but he couldn't pray like Jesus because when Jesus prayed, Jesus was able to bring dead people back to life. Some said he was, amen, in, in Jeremiah's, one of the prophets, because he had a heart like Jeremiah. He cried like Jeremiah. He was a man, amen, with a heart like Jeremiah. But Jeremiah, amen, even though he had a heart like that, he was not like Jesus. Because, amen, when Jesus saw people hurting, he didn't just go out and prophesize to them. Amen. But he went out, amen, to see about them. He went out to, amen, touch them. He went out, amen, to, amen, receive them. And, amen, he cared enough for people to lay down his life for them. Can I preach for a minute this morning? And so he was wondering, who do the men say that I am? Good question. But check this out. Then he turned around and asked them, so after they had answered him, he said, but who do you say that I am? He asked a question that appeared to have caught them off guard, y'all. Said, I know what the streets are saying about me. Amen uh, uh, to you all. Now, I want to know who do you think that I am? You got to realize up to this point, he never put them on the spot, never directly asked them the questions. Matter of fact, he had been telling them, let's kind of keep the, keep the down low if you don't, if you understand what I'm saying. But see, these were crucial times and he needed to know where his men stood. Were they with him? Amen. Were they ride or die brothers? And the only way, amen, he could be sure was to ask them, do you know who I really am? He needed for them to make it personal. Amen. They were probably wondering, amen, themselves. Why would he ask us this question. We've been called by him. We've witnessed miracles by him. We saw him, amen, cleanse the leper. We saw the centurion servants heal for long distance. We saw Peter's mother-in-law, amen, lifted up. We saw him calm the sea. We saw him exercise the demons and cast them in the pigs. We saw him heal the cripple. We watched him bring the, amen, rich ruler's daughter back to life. Saw him give sight to the blind. Speech, amen, Amen. Power of speech to the amen demon possessed man. We saw him, amen, take two fish, five loaves of bread, and feed 5,000. We saw him walk on the water. We saw him calm the storm and the winds. We saw him, amen, the woman touches him and her blood dry up. We saw him heal lame, blind, mute, lame. We saw, amen, somebody laid at his feet and he healed them, and yet he asked us to question who do we say that he is they were stumped though amen they had seen all of this amen done in front of them and yet when the question was asked who do you say that i am jesus got nothing but crickets could it be that they didn't understand that it was through the work that they had witnessed that jesus was fulfilling old testament prophecy that validated who he was. Can I teach for a minute? See, 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 even today, we got to be careful not to separate the person of Jesus Christ from the miraculous work of Jesus Christ. And can I make it clearer? Remember when John the Baptist had been imprisoned by Herod? And he sent two disciples to ask Jesus if he was the Messiah they were expecting or should they look for another? Remember that he told his disciples, go tell John what you have seen. And notice and note that he didn't say, go tell him what you heard. Because, amen, he understood people in the streets got all kind of opinions about who Jesus was. Amen. All kind of opinions about his person. All kind of opinions about his purpose. All kind of inquiries about his principles. But he confirmed who he was through validation of the Holy Word by specifying the works that he had done according to biblical prophecy. 
Note that he didn't even remind John of how he had identified him when he first saw him. He didn't say, John, remember you said, amen, that here comes a lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He didn't even say, John, remember you said that after you baptized me, you saw the spirit descend on me and you heard God personally say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. No, he confirmed who he was by doing, amen, what he did, because he was doing what he did only because, amen, he was confirming who he was. So he said, go tell John, amen, tell him, amen, the blind received their sight. Tell them the lame walk. Tell them the lepers are cleansed. Tell them the deaf hear and the dead are raised up. Tell them that the poor have the gospel preached to them, amen. And because Jesus works, Amen. Along validates who Jesus is. Can I say this morning, we can't dog them out. Amen. That there were crickets in the room because it might come as a no surprise, but everybody don't know who Jesus is. Amen. For some folks, all they know is he came through 40 and two generations. And if that's all you know, you don't really know him. Some people, amen, think he's born in Bethlehem on December 25th and just a little babe wrapped in swallowing clothes and lying in a manger. But if that's all you know, you don't really know him. Amen. Some, amen, know him as the person that turned water into wine. And amen, the miracles that he did with the fish, the five loaves of bread. Uh, he's the guy that raised Lazarus from the dead. And if that's all you know, of, amen, you don't really know him. Some only know, amen, about the resurrection story, that he's the man that got beat up, amen, and they hung him on a cross. But if you don't know the end of that story, you don't really know him. Can I preach this morning? Because Jesus is more than that, y'all. He's more than the, amen, the person that came through 42 generations. He's more than a babe born in Bethlehem in swallowing clothes. He's more than the person that turned water into wine and raised Lazarus from the dead. He is, help me holy ghost he's more than that y'all he's more than what you picked up from a sermon or two or from vacation bible school he's more than that because if that's all you know about him you got good religion amen but you don't know enough about him to declare that you got a good relationship you need to know him for yourself you need to know that he is the one and true only god you need to know that he came to die for sinners like you and me you need to know that not not only was he, amen, bruised and beaten for our sin and iniquity, and not only, amen, did they make him carry his own cross up to Galgotha's hill, and not only did they pierce his hands, amen, not only did they stretch him wide and that they hung him high, not only did he hang up on a cross, amen, from the sixth to the ninth hour, and not only did they pierce his side and blood flowed, and not only did he hang his head, amen, and said, God, into thy hands I commend thy spirit, it is fit. Finish. Not only did he die and gave up his life for you and me, and they put him, amen, in a borrowed grave, but the truth of the story is that, amen, it ain't over until you recognize that on the third day morning that God raised him up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands, and that whosoever the believe that he is the only begotten son of God, and that God raised him up from the third day morning, that the Bible says, thou shall be saved. And that's who Jesus ought to be to you. The rapture is going to prove that many might have been around him. Amen. But that don't mean that they know him. That many might have been witnesses of his miracles. But that don't mean, Lord, I feel like preaching up in here, but that don't mean that they know him. Many might have heard his truth. You might have been in church your whole life. But that don't mean that you know him. And the reality is that the day is coming when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ going to, amen, rise first. And those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But it won't happen unless you make this personal. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but thy father which is in heaven. Got to understand why that's so important. 
Because right confession of who Jesus is is basic to our salvation. Not only that, I want you to understand some church, not a religion basher, but we're not the only ones on the block talking about God and we're not the only ones talking about Jesus and we're not the only ones who claim our religion is the right religion. No, the world, amen, is offering choices to men, women, boys, and girls. And there are other religions out there that are always ready and willing and waiting and sometimes even better prepared than us to give their opinion of Jesus. If you go ask the Mormons, they'll tell you Jesus was a pre-existing spirit. Amen. Of course, they believe that about everybody. Jesus was a man, achieved great things, but he was not God, his humanity was real and it was ordinary. What happened to him, amen, could happen to any of us. Uh, Jehovah's Witness, amen, they'll tell you Jesus was a God, but he wasn't God Almighty, amen. He was a created individual who's second, amen, greatest person in the universe, amen. Amen, the Unification Church will tell you that, amen, it's plain that Jesus is not God himself, Amen. Jesus' value was no greater than that of you or me. The, amen. The, the, there's other churches out here. Even the Muslims would say Jesus was a messenger of Allah, a sinless prophet who never achieved the greatness of Muhammad. But you need to know this morning that Jesus is more than John the Baptist. He's more than Elijah's. He's more than Jeremiah's. He's more than what the Unification Church says. He's more than what the Jehovah's Witness people say. He's more than what the Mormons say. Amen. You need to understand that. Amen. That Jesus is more than what all of they have to say because at their best, what they have to say about Jesus doesn't come to close to the truth. That there's no one, amen, that, amen who's able and willing and Amen. Precious. Amen. And pure enough to stand alongside the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is unique, that Jesus Christ is supreme, that his name is above every name, that there's nobody like the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one and only. He is the one who was, who is, and who will be. Amen. And there are a lot of people who would like to compare Jesus to men, want to acknowledge his greatness. Amen. But don't want to acknowledge him as the Savior of the world. Don't want to acknowledge him as the way, the truth, and the light. Don't want to acknowledge him as the only, amen, gate to see God. And so you and I must be ready to stand like Peter to give an unwavering answer to the question, who do you say that I am? Amen. That you are the Christ, the son of the living God. We got to make it personal. It's important that you and I know who Jesus is. Because if we don't know who he is, we don't know and understand how he relates to our life, our Christian walk. Amen. We can never truly be, amen, who we ought to be. Amen. We can say that we are Christian. Amen. When you accept Christ, you got to understand we become a part of a royal family. We become a part of a royal priesthood, amen, a person, amen, who becomes a king's kid, who gets our very needs met, our sicknesses healed, our storms calm, our sins forgiven. And I, I'm saying it this morning because in this crazy trying time, you can, don't turn on the TV, amen, don't get caught up in the TV because one of Satan's most effective tricks is to get Christians to be ignorant of their true identity by confusing them and perplexing them and, and amen, baffling their minds about who it is they serve and the power that's associated with the name Jesus. And in this day and time where they're fooling folks that go into a church because that's the only place you can pray. Amen. When the church folk want to water down the gospel so it don't offend people, don't offend other folks' religions, where the people don't want to hold true to the true tenets of the gospel, that we know who Jesus is, that he is the son of God, and that we can testify that anybody can come as they are, that the Lord will take you at the point of your need. Just come. Your pants can be hanging down, but just come. Your clothes can be too tight, but just come. You can be an alcoholic. You can be a liar. You can be a cheater, but just come. Because once you get here and once you come to know Christ and you truly accept him, there will be a change. There will be a transformation of your mind. You can't look at your hands and they might not look new. And you might look at your feet and they might not look new too. But as one song songwriter said, that when Jesus, 
Jesus comes in, a new life will begin and you will never be the same again. There'll be new life. There'll be new joy and you shall receive forevermore. Old things are passed away and we will never, never be the same. But you got to know him for yourself. Got to make it personal. Many wonder why in this day and time it's the poor and the downtrodden and the outcasts and the lowest among us who know who Jesus is and not the educated and the wealthiest, the most prestigious and the most celebrated. They don't have a right relationship to be able to say, thou art the Christ. But I will remind you this morning, don't get discouraged. Amen. Jesus said himself, he prayed, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou has hid these kind of things from the wise and the prudent and have revealed them unto babes. And even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my father. And no man nor of the son, but the father, neither nor of any man, the father save the son. And he, to whomever the son, will reveal him. And so, amen, Peter, amen, in response to his answer, the Lord said, Amen, I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Many, amen, ask what rock, and theologians have debated it for years. But the rock is the truth that Jesus spoke on that day, and the word validates that, that the church would be built on the fact that Jesus is the Son of the living God. Church wouldn't be built on Peter. For even though Peter would preach the first message of the new church, the age of the church was ushered in by Christ when he ascended and amen and the Holy Spirit, the appearance of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. For it was through the Holy Spirit's power and his presence, amen, that Peter found the boldness to even stand that day after days of having lied and denied and then hiding and riding. Even now, with the power of the Holy Ghost, the Amen, the the the, the Numa, Amen, Hagios Numa, Amen, is he able to preach the first sermon of the gospel? Jesus had already declared, "When I leave, the Holy Ghost gonna come, and it's the Holy Ghost, Amen, that's gonna empower you, Amen, to go to Amen, Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, and to the uttermost parts of the earth." to be witnesses, the gospel, to carry the gospel. And so Peter preached the first for the church, but the church wasn't built on Peter. Church not built on man. And I want to, can I just teach for a minute? Not that man hadn't already tried it. Remember in Acts 5, at the end of Peter's sermon, amen, uh, he ended with the fact that the same Jesus that the people, amen, the church had seized and the same Jesus they had hung on a tree, and, amen, had now been exalted by God to his right hand and, and to be the prince and the savior and to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And he made it clear that he and his disciples were Jesus' witnesses and so was the Holy Ghost whom the Lord gives to all that obey him. But here's the point. The council got mad and wanted to kill him. But the word says a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who was a doctor of law with a good reputation among the people, told the folks, hey man, get back, Jack. Pay close attention to what you're thinking about doing to these men. And then he makes it clear that if this new religion is built on man, it will not stand. Remember, hey man, when Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody and 400 folks joined his church. And when he was killed, they scattered. And remember when Judas the Galilean, when he rose up during the days of the census and folks, amen, gathered with him. When he, when we wiped him out, everybody who followed him scattered. And so he advised them with these words. So let me say to you, amen, be wary of what you do to these men and leave them alone. Because if this plan or this undertaking, amen, originates with people, if this is works be of men, it will come to nothing. But if it's of God, you won't be able to stop them. You won't be able to overthrow them. You won't be able to bring it down. Or you might even be found to be fighting against God. Well, my brothers and sisters, 2,000 something years later, we know this is not the work of men. That Jesus had come so that those of us who were far off, who were enemies of God, who 
owe, owe God a payment for being born and shaping in sin and iniquity could be pardoned by the shedding of Christ's blood, could be reconciled unto God in one body by the cross, and that we might have access by one spirit to the Father. And watch this, y'all. It was because of Jesus, not Peter. It was because of Jesus, not Matthew, but Jesus, not even John the Beloved, but because of Jesus by faith that none of us have to be strangers or foreigners, amen, that we can, amen, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, we can be fellow citizens with the saints and with the members of the household of God that's built upon the foundation, amen, that the apostles and the prophets lay, but with Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. And it's this Jesus, this same Jesus, that the whole building being formed together grows into a holy temple in the Lord and whom you and I are also built together into a dwelling place of God into one body in the spirit. And so you can't wipe out Jesus for he is the first and the last. You can't wipe out Jesus for he is the alpha and the omega. You can't wipe out Jesus for he is the author and the finisher. Amen. His kingdom is forever and for his kingdom. Amen. The reign of his kingdom. There shall be no end. And so that's a blessing this morning. And I want to end with that because if you can't wipe out Jesus, you can't wipe out the church. See, Jesus is the cornerstone. And any builder will tell you that if you want a building to stand, its stability is built on the integrity of the cornerstone. For it's the cornerstone that holds everything up. Amen. And so if Jesus can't be taken out, if Jesus can't be destroyed, then the body of Christ that, amen, is fitted together, amen, it stands on the Lord, that stands on the truth of the gospel, that he is the Christ, the son of the living God, cannot be destroyed. Let me leave you this morning to understand that Jesus wasn't talking about a building. The Greek, Greek word of amen, where he said, I'm going to build my church is ecclesia. It's an assembly of people. Help me, holy God. It's the gathering, amen, of people in a Christian sense. It's an assembly of Christians, amen, who gather for worship. It's a company of Christians hoping for eternal salvation through Christ Jesus who observed religious, amen, spiritual rights, who of uh, uh, religious meetings, amen, who manage their affairs, amen, according to the body of Christ. It's those, amen, ecclesia, amen, I love the meaning where it just says whether you're anywhere, whether you're in the city or in the village, we still constitute a company and we're united into one body. It's the whole body of Christians scattered throughout the earth, the symbol of faithful Christians who are, amen, together combined in the body of Christ. The church is not the building. The church, the ecclesia, is the body of Christ. And so let me leave you, my brothers and sisters, this morning. Amen. We are the church. It ain't over at 10727 Piney Branch Road. Amen. The church ain't over there. Amen. I don't know a whole lot of other addresses. I forget them. Amen. But I can tell you that the church, amen, is the body of Christ. And I want you to understand that the Bible makes it clear there, there is one body and we've all been built on Christ. And we are like the human body. We are made up not of just one part, but many parts. And God desires all of us to do our job. Amen. Just because you say that I'm not the hand, I'm not part of the body, it's not so. Just because the ears say I'm not the eye, I don't want to be part of the body, it's not so. Amen. Because if the whole body was an eye, how could we hear? And if the whole body was an ear, how could we smell? But the word declares that God, amen, have put the body together with Jesus as the cornerstone. And each of us, each and every part of the body has been put together in a spiritual temple put together as God has wanted it to be. No, we are all one body. He put it together so that we might, amen, put, amen, have special purpose, amen, so that we might not be divided, y'all, but that all parts together might come together, have the same concern for each other so that if one part of the body suffers, all part of the body suffers, and if one part of the body is praised, all parts of the body praise. No, we are Christ's body. 
everybody, and each of us, amen, are individuals and got a part in it. Amen. The church of God has appointed some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some will perform miracles, some have the gift of healing, some have the gift to help others, some, amen, who are managers and administrators, and some who can speak in tongues, and some who can interpret tongues. And yes, amen, if we do our part, amen, then the body of Christ is edified. And so, amen, whether we're in the uh, building or out of the building, we're going to preach, amen, to his glory. Whether we're in the building or the out of the building, we're going to sing, amen, to his honor. Whether we are in a building or out of the building, we're going to pray for his perfect will. We're going to preach from the perspective, amen, that we walk according to the Lord, that we draw closer, amen, to him, draw closer to the altar, draw closer to, amen, that place so that we get to know the Lord on a first name basis. And wouldn't it be so wonderful that when we all get back together, amen, amen, when we come together, amen, not just in the building, but every time we come together, that we're on, on one accord, that every time we come together, that we realize we, amen, come thirsty for the living water, that we are hungry for the living bread, so much so that we stop worrying about what they're saying out there in the other house, and what they're saying in the head house, we stop worrying about what other people got to say about us, and what they got to say about for Jesus, and for the little time that we're in his presence, the little time that we come together, we realize that even though we're not in a building, we're still one in him. And so that while we're together as a body, with him as the cornerstone, that we focus on him, that we declare he is the greatest, that while we're here, nothing will distract us, nothing will take us away from his presence, amen, that while we're here, our mind is going to be stayed on him, and we shall worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And if we do that every time, where every time we're together, if our mind is stayed on him, every time together we give him the glory, the honor, and the praise, and every time we're in his presence, if we're lifting up the Lord, amen, then I declare that they can say what they want, and they can do what they want, amen, but he is the Christ, the son of the living God, and upon this rock is his church built, and the gates of hell can never prevail against it. Somebody give God a hand praise in the building today. Bless his holy name. Oh, I thank you, God. Bless his holy name. Bless his name. Come on as we prepare to go out this morning. Amen. With prayer. Amen. I, 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 want to go out this morning, amen, with this song. We ended with it last week, amen. Feel like we need to end with it again this week. Make it personal, amen. Make it personal, make it personal. You thought I was worth saving, so you came. Changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. Ain't that good news? So you came, changed my life. When you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. You can sing with the blessed assurance. Mm. Hallelujah. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone. I know you thought I was worth saving. Make it personal this morning. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. This ain't about your neighbor. This is about you. You cling me up inside. You thought I was to die for. Hallelujah. 
So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell everyone I know Come on, somebody this morning ought to give God a hand praise up in the building. I know you in your house and people looking at you, but you are to shout to the glory of God this morning that he has made a way out of no way. And even in this crazy season that we're in, that his blood is able to cover us and to keep us and to hold us. Hallelujah! That God, amen, still has the power to overcome you ought to be able to shout this morning. Can somebody shout with me? Hallelujah. Glory to the God that changed my life. And I will praise you. I'll worship you. I'll give you glory. Hallelujah. Because I am free. Because I am home, tell everyone I know. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Woo! Glory to the God that changed my life. And I will praise you. Can I get a witness? I'll worship you. I'll give you glory. You deserve it, Lord. I'll praise you. I'll lift you up. I'll give you praise. I'll give you glory. Because I am free. Because I am whole. And I will tell everyone I know. God, we bless you on this morning. We thank you once again, God, for revealing yourself to us. And for God counting us worthy to be saved. Thank you, God, for an opportunity to examine our lives again so that we might come to be able to answer the question for ourselves. Who do not so much men say I am, but who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? God, my prayer is that all who are up under this failing voice might have blessed assurance that they can say that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know that thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And for that God, we know it shall be done. Shall be done, shall be so. And so we give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, if you pray the prayer, amen, to ask the Lord into your life, we pray that you would stay in his word. Find yourself a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. Amen. And study to show thyself approved. A workman, a workman, workwoman not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Get to know him for yourself. Draw closer to him and he will draw closer to you. So you can answer the question. Make it personal. Who are? Who am I to you? Make it personal. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And you are my Lord and my Savior. I greet you all. Amen. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Father, I pray that you watch between me and my brothers and sisters in Christ while we're absent one from another and until we meet again. I leave you in the hands of the Lord and Christ and Savior who is able to sustain us until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say amen and amen. We'll see you. Amen. Next time. God bless you.